Well, good morning. How's everybody doing this morning? You excited to be here? Three of you? Awesome. Hey, well, it's good to see you. We're so happy that you're here this morning. And uh, I believe God's got something great planned for you. You know how I know when we come expecting God can meet us and we can encounter him? How many of you came expecting this morning? Yeah. You know what that means? It means I came with an open heart ready to receive from you, Lord. So um, we're going to go over a couple announcements and then uh, we're going to just have a moment of prayer. Uh, the first announcement is remember tonight. Everybody say tonight. Tonight, it, tonight at 5 o'clock. Now everybody say 5 o'clock. Say 5 o'clock. Say I'm going to be here. Say, I'm going to be here. Look, you got a little sketchy. You can't lie in church, huh? Now you have to come, see? Tonight at 5 o'clock, we're going to be having a ministry fair uh, slash kind of a meeting uh, slash fellowship. Um, we're going to have dessert. What we're asking is, if you are coming tonight, would you bring a dessert? Just bring your favorite dessert. Or if you say, hey, I ain't got time uh, to make a dessert, just grab something and bring it. Um, make sure you eat real food uh, before you come because after that we're going to have uh, desserts just here um, at the church at 5 o'clock. So remember that and then we're going to do uh, just a couple of a business stuff uh, as far as our, our new church app. Uh, any questions, there'll be a table set up for you to come around and ask any questions on that. Also, uh, you'll be able to hear about all the ministries that we have in our church and all the ones that we're wanting to start in our church, okay? And then uh, you'll get to uh, just fellowship with one another. How many of you know we need fellowship with one another? It's great. I heard somebody say the other day, he said, yeah, I don't know some of the people in our church. This is your opportunity, okay? So don't miss it. Uh, we won't make you do nothing that uh, you don't want to do, so just come and be a part of it. Here's where it's going to be. It's going to be down in our youth room. So if you don't know where our youth room is, you'll go out. Um, if you come into the parking lot, it's the... Uh, last set of double doors down there, you'll come into that side door, and that's where we'll have our fellowship slash uh, meeting. I think Pastor said it yesterday on a one call. Uh, how did you say that? Uh, members, uh, guests are welcome, but members uh, are expected. So uh, guests are welcome, but members are expected. Uh, I heard somebody say it this week. How do you know that you're a part of a family? When you're here and being a part of the family. So you need to come and be a part of that tonight. Amen. Amen. Make plans for it. So uh, the other announcement is is the Young Mary group. Um, I think Andy and Star has been handing out some flyers uh, for you guys for February the 18th. Uh, we're, they're doing a True Love Stays instead of a True Love Wait. So True Love Stays. Uh, it's going to be a Valentine's dinner uh, just uh, at Big Dave's restaurant. That's good, right? Yeah. Big Dave. Oh, Brandon ain't even up here. Uh, so over at Big Dave, so if you have any questions, I think it's $30 a couple. If you have any questions, please see Andy and Star. Um, I still have a, several tithing statements in the back. Uh, we've been trying to give them out as you come in. Uh, but if you haven't picked yours up and you're wondering where it's at, please ask me or Julie. We'll be happy to give you that. Um, and then middle age group, um, second the last supper, uh, stuck in the middle. I don't know. We're, we'll call it something, right? Uh, those people right there. Hey, if you, uh, if you are excited about what's happening, because um, I know they've been planning getting some things together. Their first gathering is going to be the Super Bowl party uh, down here in the youth room. Uh, so uh, I don't know all the details. Maybe bring a, a finger food, come and hang out, come and fellowship. And uh, even if you don't like watching football, you can come and fellowship. Please see Kim, Dunn, or TG about that. They'd be happy to give you some more information. Uh, also, since we are doing our uh, fellowship tonight, our prayer time has changed to Monday. Uh, that is going to be um, still at the same time. That's 4 o'clock, right, Carol? 5 o'clock. 5 o'clock. Uh, so uh, remember that. Men's retreat. I have a lot of announcements this morning. Um, I couldn't sleep last night, so I was like, okay, what all do I need to announce? And typed it out, made it real organized, you know, make it look good. Um, men's retreat, so $175. 
Look, don't let that stop you. You heard Bob last week. Uh, it's a great opportunity for you to fellowship with other other men, but also you get to see Foursquare as a whole. So don't let the $175 stop you. If you say, well, I ain't got the money, uh, we have people who are willing to uh, pay for your way, uh, but we want you to be uh, there. Uh, the last day for us to register for that, I'm going to register everybody that's going to that on the 11th. So I need to know if you are going uh, before the 11th, all right? So remember that. And then Shabbat money is due today. We're heading out for Shabbat next weekend, or this weekend coming up, not next weekend. Uh, we'll be leaving Thursday. Uh, Shabbat starts on Friday, uh, Saturday morning. I have the honor of speaking at Shabbat this year. Uh, so the Lord's going to, yeah. So somebody said, are you nervous? I said, a little bit. That's like 3,000 people, you know. So we'll see what happens. You know, the Lord will, will guide us and the Holy Spirit will, will move as he always does. Amen? Amen. And then the last announcement I have is, we are still planning to do our Good Friday service this year. Uh, there's been so much going on. We haven't really uh, talked about it much, but our, our goal is to have it again this year. Uh, but we're going to do it here at the church like we did last year. Uh, we, we did it at Pops, and I, we felt like that was a great year, and that was the season that God had for us at Pops. And we've seen over 2,000 people there. We've seen an amazing turnout. But... Last year, there was just something about being in our church where we could allow the Holy Spirit to be able to move freely. Um, so we're going to do that again this year, and we are super excited about it. So after Shabbat, uh, we'll get into that and start uh, getting everything going with that. Amen? Amen? Hey, can you stand with me and just greet a couple of people around you? Tell them it's good to see them. Tell them you love them. All right. Hey, if you're visiting with us, we just want to welcome you uh, this morning. You heard me share a lot of announcements, uh, but if you are new with us or you've been with us or this is your first time, tonight's a great opportunity for you to come and be a part. Also, uh, everyone is welcome to be there. Uh, so if you are visiting with us, come and hear about the ministries. Uh, even if you say, I don't know if I want to get involved yet, that's all right. Just come and hear about it. Come and fellowship. Let us get to know you as well. Hey, over the uh, course of the past several months, we have uh, opened our service uh, on several occasions uh, with prayer. How many of you know that prayer is important? How many, how many of you know on this journey we need to have a lifestyle of prayer? Man, church, you're quiet. How many of you know on this journey you need to have a lifestyle of prayer? Yeah. Prayer is important because we can communicate. Isn't it awesome that we serve a God that hears us? Not only does he hear us, but he really hears us. And he receives our prayers and he answers our prayers. So I'm so grateful uh, that we serve a God that is not far away, but he's very near to us. Uh, so we're going to do that again this morning. I think uh, we got a couple who wanted to come up and be anointed um, we're also, if, if you didn't tell us and you say, hey, I want to come up and I, I just feel like I need to be anointed this morning, uh, why don't you come up as well as these others? Chrissy, I know you wanted to uh, be anointed. Um, Nathan, I'm going to ask you to come up. Um, Peyton's mom, uh, Barbara, she's not, um, she's dealing with some sickness or uh, Bill, uh, poor Bill has been struggling over the past couple of weeks and trying to keep uh, Judy <laughs> from not getting sick so pray for him um, uh, several 
uh, of our people who have been with us for a while, Justin Green, I think it's, is that his last name, Pastor? Justin Green, he is, uh, he used to be in the wheelchair. He, he came, he, he rapped uh, some, some songs uh, one time. Um, he is not doing uh, well. Uh, I know Chuck Allard is having heart surgery. There's, there's so much, and maybe even you, you're here this morning, you say, hey, I just, it doesn't have to be something that you're dealing with in sickness. It could be something, hey, I just need prayer for my life right now. I'm in a battle. I'm in a moment where I just need the Lord's direction. He is faithful. He is faithful, church. So if you're here and you just need uh, that, I'm going to ask you to come around as well. Anybody else? Father, we're so grateful this morning that, Lord, you are everything. Lord, there's never a season, there's never a time, there's never a situation in our life, Lord, that you didn't meet us at. Jesus, either where you prayed for us, you stood at the whipping post and by those stripes were healed, or laid your life down on Calvary, and then rose again victorious. And Father, now seated, interceding for us and coming back to get us. So Lord, I thank you this morning in these seasons of life where each one of these are, Lord, and the others in this church body and the names and even we, we didn't call, but Lord, you know and you care about. Father, we just simply declare the name of Jesus. And Father, in that name, Lord, there is freedom, there is deliverance, Lord, there is healing, Lord, there is miracles, there is life, there is forgiveness, there is justification, Lord God, there is restoration, Lord, there is everything that we need. And Father, we thank you right now for the anointing of the Holy Spirit. And Father, we thank you that that anointing destroys every yoke. So, Father, we declare right now upon each of these, Father, that are standing here, Father, the healing power of God to move, Lord. God, I know there's several miracles that are needed that are standing here. And, Lord, you are the God of miracles. God, when man does all they can do, and we're grateful for that, we don't stand against that. But, God, we're so grateful we have you, Lord, that you never look at us and said I did all I could do because you did all you needed to do when you said it was finished and Lord in that every need is met so Father we bless you for that we receive that and Lord again the scripture I love that if we ask anything according to your will Lord we know that you hear us come on church we know that you hear us how many believe that healing this morning is in the will of God we know that you hear us. And if we know that you hear us, we have what we ask of you. So, Lord, we receive it. We thank you for it. We bless you for it. We honor you for it. We celebrate who you are this morning, church. Come on, give him praise. Come on, give him praise. That's your prayer. Give him praise. Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Are you ready to worship? Yeah. yeah.
Well, I'm going to tell you like my papa Clyde used to say, my great-grandpa, if I don't light your wood, I don't know your wood's wet this morning. You're just going to stay in your grave, I guess. Because he's definitely in this room. And if you don't feel him, then you better run to the altar and find him this morning. Because he is in this room this morning. He's here for whatever need you have. He's here to heal your heart, to change your name, and set you free. By any means, I don't want to make this about me. But every Saturday night, I fight a battle in my body before I come here on Sunday morning. You can ask my husband. I'm up and down all night long. And you all know my story for almost these three years. I'm on the front lines, so I'm going to ask you today to pray for me every week. You know, I have my grandchildren. I'm going to ask you today to pray for them every week. So I don't get up here lightly. Sometimes I get up here with a heaviness. But he never forsakes me. we got up here this morning and we made a mess of things, didn't we, Brandon? <laughs> and I told him, I said, the Lord's going to bless our mess. He always does. Because just, just the anointing. The anointing is what breaks the yoke. I'm just another singer. I'm just another person. Without the anointing of Jesus. I'm thankful for the anointing that I can get up here. And I can sing about God's goodness. Even in my situation, He's good. I can proclaim His goodness. My five-year-old reminds me, Mimi, we live by faith, not by sight. living by faith this morning, not by sight. Because if I'd lived by sight this morning, I wouldn't be here. So when I ask you to worship him, I'm not asking for me. I'm asking because he's worthy. I'm asking because he's good. I'm asking because he's carried me through another week where I didn't think I was going to make it. Where I've cried myself to sleep at night because I miss my child. being on the front lines all the time. But he's worthy. He's worthy of it all. In my weakness, he's made strong. I'm just being raw and honest this morning.
I'm not forsaken, never alone. The God of heaven calls me his own. He's not just seated upon the throne. I know he's right here inside my home. I've got a chance.
I said, amen. Man, you look ready this morning. I hear you. I can hear you behind me. You're excited to be in the house of the Lord. Aren't you grateful that we can just come and worship him? That he inhabits, he's with us in our praises. Aren't you glad he receives it? He doesn't just push it away. How many of you are ready to redeem your finances? Three of you. Amen. Hallelujah. Thankful for you. Amen. How many of you are ready to redeem your finances? Listen, hear me. We get excited during worship. We don't get excited when it's time to give our offering. We don't get excited when it's time to preach the word. We can move a little bit during worship, right? It's a sacrifice for us to be able to do this. But in that sacrifice, it becomes an obedience to the Lord. And guess what he can do in your obedience? He can bless it. I am so grateful. I'm not a person that gives to get, and I wouldn't be doing offering if the Lord hasn't been good to me. Look, when I was 15 years old, I started tithing in my first job. And the Lord has been faithful to me over all these years. I've never wanted for anything. I've never lacked for nothing. You know why? Because he is faithful. Because I believe in his kingdom investment. I said, I believe in his kingdom investment. Julie, I know she was just joking. I'll tell you a quick story. Uh, since I've been working at the church full time, we, we kind of are uh, working together. But she had said, uh, Knox had been bringing, and some of the kids have been bringing their offering up. And she was like, I got to enter all these kids into the system, you know, just joking with two and three dollars. And I said, I'm thankful for it. Yeah. Amen. I said, amen. So I am so thankful that I can redeem my finances and that uh, God will take care of me in my time of need. Amen. So we're going to do our uh, offering declaration. So as we obey the Lord and bring in our tithes and offering, make the following declaration in faith. According to Malachi 3, the windows of heaven are opening over every area of my life and my blessing will be more than I can contain. The plans of the enemy to bring destruction to any area of my life canceled so that I can enjoy the abundance of life that Jesus spoke about in John 10. According to Deuteronomy 28, the blessings of the Lord shall overtake me. I am blessed in the city and in the field. My vocation vocation and my investments are blessed. I am blessed going out and coming in. The Lord has commanded his blessings and all that I undertake that every enemy that comes against me shall flee before me seven ways. This is my declaration and my commitment is to take what God blesses me with to bless others in the further work of God's kingdom. Amen. If you believe that, can you just bring your offering this morning? Also, Children's Church will be dismissed.
I think it was in my prayer time, um, Thursday, Friday morning, I can't remember. Sometimes I just like to sing songs to the Lord, and uh, I'm not going to sing to you this morning. He made my voice, he has to listen to it, but... uh, But I want Angel to sing something, and then I want to uh, have a recitation to the song I want you to read. And I want you to just put yourself in a place of praise and honoring the name of Jesus. Go ahead, guys. Jesus, hatred and bitterness turn to love and forgiveness. Arguments cease. I've heard a mother softly breathe his name at the bedside of a child delirious from fever. And I've watched that little body be quiet, fevered brow cooled. I've sat at the bedside of a dying saint, her body racked with pain who in those final fleeting seconds summoned her last ounce of ebbing strength just to whisper earth's sweetest name, Jesus, Jesus. You see, emperors have tried to destroy it. Philosophies have tried to stamp it out. Tyrants have tried to wash it from the face of the earth with the very blood of those who have claimed it. Yet, it still stands. And there shall be that final day when every voice that has ever uttered a sound, every voice of Adam's race shall raise in one mighty chorus to proclaim the name of Jesus. For that day every knee shall bow, every tongue shall confess that Jesus Christ is truly Lord. So you see, it was not mere chance that calls the angel one night long ago to say to a virgin virgin maiden, his name shall be called Jesus. Would you stand as they sing through this again? And can we worship that name that is above every name? That name that will stand whatever other name is gone, the name of Jesus.
high above that. Would you receive that right now? you to do whatever giant is standing in front of you this morning whether it be sickness whether it be a rut you're in as we're singing get up get up get up out of that grave I was reminded that a rut is only a grave with both ends closed oh Jesus I just feel him washing over somebody right now in Jesus' name. So would you say it with praise, but would you shout that name over whatever your need is this morning and know that in that name your need is met. So come on, on the count of three, I don't want to hear that name that is above every name. I don't want to hear any other words. I don't even want to hear a hand clap of praise. I want to hear the name of Jesus. I want this house to be filled with that name. I want this roof to be lifted off of this place because of the name of Jesus. I want it to be such a glory that will flow into our entire neighborhood this morning and that feel the presence of Jesus. So are you ready? One, two, three. What's that name? Jesus. Come on, we can do better than that. Come on. Jesus. 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 Hallelujah. Jesus. Oh, Jesus. Father, I believe that right now in that name, that everything that you've reminded this people of today as they shouted that name. God, I believe that it's broken. I believe that it is gone. Lord, we know that the truth shall make us free. And if the truth, if we're free, if we're free indeed. And Lord, as I sink in this week, Jesus, you are the truth. So if Jesus makes us free, we're free indeed this morning. So come on, give him a shout of praise. Come on. Put your hands together. Give him praise this morning. Hallelujah. He is worthy. He is worthy. He is worthy. He is worthy. Oh, I bless.
bless you, Jesus. Oh, I bless you, Jesus. Oh, you can be seated if you can. Thank you, guys. Wow. Mm. You may ask why I love that name. It's in that name I have hope. It's in that name I have cleansing, forgiveness, and freedom. It's in that name I have mercy. It's in that name I have grace. It's in that name I'm justified. It's in that name I'm adopted. Oh, it's in that name I know that I'm never alone, that he'll never leave me and he'll never forsake me. For he said, I'll go with you all the way, even unto the end of the world. So I bless that name this morning. I bless that name. Well, maybe it was just for me. I don't know, but I just felt led to do that this morning. Hallelujah. 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 Jesus, help us this morning. Wow. Hmm. Jesus. I'm singing that too. Father, thank you for your presence. God, we're so honored that you meet with us. Spirit, we wait upon you. We wait upon you. in these moments sometimes you don't know how to proceed (laughs) because you know God's in the house and when God's in the house you see there God's always here because 
He's omnipresent, but they're just those moments that are just holy moments before the Lord. And I'm so grateful for those. I was thinking, I was going to endeavor to get back talking a little bit about Israel, but we're willing here in a moment. I was thinking about prophecy. And I've heard people say things like, well, I'm an Old Testament style prophet. You know, I'm doom, gloom, God's going to get you. I got to thinking about that this week. And as I've been looking about the prophecies concerning Israel, and absolutely, God had to speak judgment. Absolutely, God had to warn, and there was hard things God had to say. But have you ever noticed, at the end of everything that he said, he still said there's going to be redemption. I don't think you heard that. I said at the end of everything he said, he may have to bend, he may have to break, He may have to let you be led into captive in another land, but I'm coming back, and what you've lost, I'm going to restore. (laughs) Hey. I thought about that. Lord, I don't even know if some of those guys that say, I'm an Old Testament style, even know what they're saying. Because every prophecy in the Old Testament, in the Bible, it's literally eventually going to point to Jesus and his return in his kingdom. Listen, because the testimony of Jesus Christ is the very spirit of prophecy. Is that, is that, what, is that what John wrote as the angel said that to him? Beginning in the Revelation... That the very testimony of Jesus Christ is the spirit of prophecy. So that's the reason I believe we need to know the times we're in, where we're at. Because I believe we live in exciting times. There are turbulent times, but exciting times. Because I really believe that soon and very soon... We're going to see the king. I, I really believe that. More than I believed it next, next year, my, um, I, I received a text. My daughter did, and she sent it to me, uh, a message um, a couple of weeks ago where, again, the lady who was a mentor to me, my Sunday school teacher, Annie Arrowwood, had written in the back of her Bible, the date and the topic of my very first message. It wasn't just me, but all of her preacher boys. She had written the date of our first sermon and the topic of our first sermon. So next year will mark 50 years that I've been endeavoring to preach this word. And I can remember 50 years ago hearing about the coming of the Lord. I even had a man tell me one time, he said, go in debt for everything you want. I mean, he was serious. He did. He said, because Jesus is coming soon and leave it for the Antichrist to pay. Man, I'm glad that wasn't wisdom I followed. (laughs) After almost 50 years, I'd been, been in trouble. But he did. I mean, he went and bought him a new truck and all this stuff. And, uh, you know, it didn't work out for him. So, but you know, but I remember hearing the message that Jesus is soon coming. I believe we live in a day that we are soon going to see our King. So I believe we need to understand even what is going on in our world, and even about Israel. I always, almost felt two weeks ago I was teaching a history lesson, and there may be. Some of it, because I want, I want you to see this. I want you to 
understand God's dealing with the nation of Israel. I heard this morning, or I think in the middle of the night, I can't remember, um, that in America, the hatred of Jewish people have gone up 388%. I looked at that and I thought, what? 388% that the hatred of the Jewish people had went up. Now, at the same time, the hatred of uh, every other race of people and every other lifestyle situation that people love to hate, but none has risen like the hatred for the people of Israel and the nation of Israel, Jewish hate. So you got to know that the enemy knows that there is something that he's got to try to work on because he doesn't want to see the prophecies of God fulfilled. Listen, understand this with me. The Bible says the devil knows there's only one God and he trembles because of it. I mean, we set aside, oh, the devil's going to get me, the devil's going to get me. No, he's, he's shaking in his boots. Come on, Bible readers, is that the truth? Is that what the word of the Lord says? Not that he's shaking in his boots, but that he's not the word his boots. But, but he knows that there's one God, and he trembles because of it. So in his work, he will try to do everything he can to stop the prophecies of God being fulfilled. Now, we know he's not going to succeed in that. He's already been defeated. Jesus defeated him at Calvary, rose again victorious over death, hell, and the grave. But I told you last week, I better get into this. I won't get anywhere this morning. I read to you Psalms 122, and I'm not going to read that whole passage. But verse 6 says, pray for the peace of Jerusalem. May they who prosper love you. Psalms 135 and verse 4 says, For the Lord has chosen Jacob for himself, Israel for his special treasure. And it goes on in verse 10, He defeated many nations. And slew mighty king Sihon, the king of the Amorites, Og, the king of Bashan, and all the kingdoms of Canaan, and gave their land as a heritage, a heritage to Israel, his people. And that's just a few verses of what God says about what the church, our stand should be concerning the nation of Israel. And I walked through... Two weeks ago, we walked through all the history of the kings and their falling and the, you know, their being led away bondage. And I got to the point, uh, and we read this scripture last two weeks ago, and it was Amos 9, verses 11 through 15. On that day, I will raise up the tabernacle of David, which has fallen down, and repair its damages. I will raise up his ruins and rebuild it as in the days of old, that they may possess the remnant of Eden and all the Gentiles who are called by my name, says the Lord, who does this thing. Behold, the days are coming, says the Lord, where the plowman shall overtake the reaper and the treader of grapes whom who sows seed. The mountains shall drip with sweet wine and all the hills shall flow with it. I will bring back the captives of my people Israel. They shall build the waste cities and inhabit them. They shall plant vineyards and drink wine from them. They shall also make gardens and eat fruit from them. I will plant them in their land, and no longer shall they be pulled up from the land that I have given them, says the Lord God. That, to me, is pretty plain about God's history and God's plans for Israel. I told you again two weeks ago, does that mean that God has always been pleased with everything Israel has done? The answer to that is absolutely no. It broke his heart, I'm sure, when they had to be led away captive. And when they sat beside the, the trees and they uh, demanded of them a song of Zion. And they said, how shall we sing the Lord's song in a strange land? 
That was never God's plan. Does it mean also that God is pleased with everything that Israel is doing right now? Or does it mean that God has a hatred for the people of Palestine, the people in Gaza? The answer to that is absolutely not. When Jesus died on the cross, he died for all men. But does it mean that God chose Israel? He gave the promise to Abraham. He made a covenant, and again a covenant that didn't depend upon Abraham. Abraham just had to accept it by faith when God walked through with a burning oven and a burning to- smoking oven and a burning torch. And God made a covenant. And listen, when God makes a covenant, God never goes back on his covenant. You understand that with me? When even the covenant, the blood covenant we have, and I don't have time to get into that, is a covenant that God has made with us through Jesus Christ. Amen. Nothing that I did to deserve it. Nothing I still do to deserve it. But God made the covenant with me through Jesus Christ. So it is a covenant. God is not a covenant breaker God. I remember as a kid hearing the term, you know, don't be an Indian giver. You know, don't, you know, some of them say, what in the world is that? Probably some of you younger guys. Well, I always interpreted it as meaning this, that when you give somebody something, it's theirs. Don't take it back, right? And God is that way. Even the gifts and the callings of God, the Bible said, are what are without repentance. God doesn't change his mind in that. So God has never changed his mind about the restoration of Israel as prophecy, as time, as eternity comes about. Jerry Dearman, who pastors a uh, rock church, pastors the rock church, four square church, and Anaheim, California, he said this, one of the greatest signs that we're in the last days is that at least 2,700 years ago, many prophets in the Old Testament predicted that at the end of the age, God would bring the Jewish people back to the homeland. This was a prophecy that most people thought could never happen. The Jews were exiled from their homeland for nearly 2,000 years And it never happened in history that anyone displaced from their nation for centuries had retained their identity as a people. But the Jewish people did. Because they had a book. (laughs) They had a book. It didn't look exactly like this book. And it didn't even look like the 1599 Geneva Bible that Ray gave me this morning. So... But they had a book. They had the the prophecies of the Lord. They had God's promises. This is also the land from which Jesus will take over the rulership of the world. Some people think this is a fairy tale, but it is not. This has been going on since creation of mankind. There are about 2,500 prophecies in the Bible. About 2,000 of them have already come to pass in exact Detail, and I gave you that mathematical mathematical chance that it could be two weeks ago, and the remaining five hundred are about the end of the age. Many people are banking that their eternities on the fact that those last five hundred probably won't come true, but of course they will. And one of the primary things that God has promised to do with this Jewish nation was that He established through Abraham to bring a Savior into the world. Jesus Christ, the Son of God, is also a Jewish man. He was born of the Jewish lineage. It was also in the land of Israel that Jesus gave us the Great Commission, saying, Go make disciples of all nations. In 1948, Israel became a nation, which was a miraculous fulfillment of the promise after nearly 2,000 years. So Israel, exiled. We go through 400 silent years is what they call the the Maccabean period, the time between the Old and the New Testaments. But thank God the promises of God was fulfilled and Jesus was born into the world. He came, he lived, he died, he rose again, ascended, sat down on the right hand of the Father. And at Pentecost, the church was born. Aren't you thankful for that? 
that, that the church was born. But this young church that would turn the world upside down for a few hundred years began to be embraced by formalism and it began to lose some of that fervor and the excitement and, and it began to be persecuted by Nero and the others in Rome and the, the stories of that are absolutely, it is horrendous when you read those things. But then the Romans didn't stay in power. They were taken over by barbarians and that started what we know of as the Dark Ages. It was in the Dark Ages that Islam came about. That whole uh, history and Muhammad died during that time and all the things they constructed, they went on the top because they, they were in power at the time and they went on top of the Temple Mount and they built what is still there, the Dome of the Rock which is something that's going to have to go for the temple Amen. to be rebuilt. Yes. But they established that. And it was then that the first crusaders, if you know anything about history, the crusaders from the church and from the Rome, the Byzantines, they went and they slaughtered many Jewish and they slaughtered not only Jewish people, but they sw uh, slaughtered the Muslim people. Well, then the Muslims under Saladin reconquered Jerusalem. And Jews began to be expelled from France and nations such as this. It, then there's a great plague. And then again in around 1394, another expulsion of Jews from France. And then the Muslims were conquered by the Byzantine Empire, which was a branch of the Roman Empire. And Jews then began to be expelled from Spain. Then we have the Protestant Reformation where Martin Luther tacked on the, the door and said, The just shall live by faith. And at that time, there began to be a 400-year occupation of the land of Israel by the Turkish nation, the Ottoman Turks. At that time, we have the King James Bible being published. But at that time, something began to happen. There began to be a trickling of Jewish people back to this land called Palestine. It wasn't always called Palestine. Some believe that they named that after the Philistines who were enemies of Israel. So almost as a mockery to the Jewish people, they named the land Palestine. Isaiah 11 says, And it shall come to pass in that day that the Lord shall set his hand again the second time, listen, to recover the remnant of his people who are left from Assyria and Egypt and Panthros and Cush and Elam and Shinar from Amoth and all the islands of the sea. He shall set up a bound banner of the nations and will assemble the outcast of Israel, and gather together the dispersed of Judah from the four corners of the earth. In 1888, now think about this with me. All of this prophecy, everything that God has said in 1888. Now I got to thinking about 1888. That was my great-grandfather's generation. My great-grandfather's generation I don't know about you but just think about those of you who are here that are great grandparents and think about your great grandchild compared to them to you is where 1888 was to me to my great grandfather now another generation has came and gone but we're only talking about four or five generations ago that this prophecy began to be fulfilled and God began to restore. They were called aliyahs. If I pronounce it right, it means a going up. It means uh, that they're, they're coming back. They're going and they're going up to the land of Palestine. And in 1888 was the very first as persecution was to the Jewish people around uh, Europe. They began to go back in 1897. 
the first Zionist Congress was held in Switzerland where they said it is imperative that we have a homeland for our people in 1904. That, and again, I know that was great-grandfather because I, rem I still remember the code to the... Well, it's probably not still there, and I'm, I probably shouldn't tell you this, but... Well, it's not still there. But I remember the code to get into some of the hospital places when I was doing uh, chaplaincy work because I remember the year that Cheryl's grandfather was born, Preacher Carver, and it was 1906. So I remembered the code. That's how I remembered it. So, But in 1904 started the second wave of the Jewish people, the second Aliyah, they call it, from Russia, from Poland, they were driven by persecutions. And in 1909, the first Jewish community was established in Israel. But it wasn't going to be long before World War I was going to break out. And at that time, the people, the Turks that were uh, over the land of Palestine, they aligned or allied themselves with the nation of Germany. So World War I took place 1914 to 1918. But in 1917, General Allenby of the British Army, he took Jerusalem. He defeated the Ottoman Turks that for 400 years had ruled that land. General Allenby of the British Army went in and took the land uh, uh, of Jerusalem back from the Turks. And they... They declared this. It was called the Balfour Declaration. The British expect, expressed their support in writing for a homeland for the Jews in Israel, but they didn't live up to their actions. The mandate came. The third Aliyah started happening from Russia. They migrated to Palestine. The Jewish language, the Hebrew language, became the official language from 1924 to 1932. The fourth Aliyah that came from Poland. Uh, 1933, Hitler comes to power. Why? Why is that important? Because as World War II will start, there will be six million Jews that will be slaughtered. Remember I told you two weeks ago that Wikipedia says that there are 77.2 7 million Jewish people living in Israel? Do the math. Six million were slaughtered during the Holocaust. Almost as many, just a million less, which is millions a lot of people, but also six million is. Six million were slaughtered they began to put limits on how many Jews could go back. And they began to come up with a, a partition plan for Palestine, this land. And that was where there began to be a division of the land. And the people of Israel, they accepted it. But the Arabs said, we're not going to accept it during those days. So there come a time that all of this British mandate, British rule was coming to an end. And the day was, some of you may know it, it's May the 14th, 1948. On that day, at midnight of that day, the British rule, the British occupation taking care of Israel ended. And on that day, David Ben-Gurion, who was the, the leader of the People's Council, he stood up and he said this, this right is the natural right of the Jewish people to be masters of their own fate like all other nations in their sovereign state. Accordingly, we, members of the People's Council, representatives of the Jewish community of Eretz Israel, which is the land of Israel, and of the Zionist movement are here assembled on the day of the termination of the British mandate over Eretz Israel and by virtue of our natural and historic right, and on the strength of the resolution of the United Nations General Assembly, hereby declare the establishment of a Jewish state in Israel to be known as the state of Israel. On that one day, the nation was born. Does that prove a prophecy? Well, I'm glad you asked, because Isaiah said... 
In Isaiah 66, beginning with verse 8, Who has heard such a thing? Who has seen such things? Shall the earth be made to give birth in one day? And shall a nation be born at once? For as soon as Zion was in labor, she gave birth to her children. And shall I bring to the time of birth and not cause delivery, says the Lord? Shall I who cause delivery shut up the womb, says the Lord? No, God said it was born in a day, and I'm not stopping it. God said, I didn't bring it to birth to stop it. I've got a prophecy. I've got a timeline. I, I, I've got something that I'm going to fulfill. And this is a continuation. We may say it's just history. We may say it's just something that's happened. You can read some of this stuff uh, on the history channel. But no, this is prophecy. Are you understanding that with me? This is prophecy. This is the word of the Lord, the very testimony of Jesus Christ being fulfilled the new state was born on that day but the very next day either four or five Arab nations declared war and they started war against the people of Israel get this four I think it's five nations within a year Israel came through victorious This little nation that had been born in a day, this little nation that had been dispersed, but God brought them back and God was restoring them. How did they do that? It was because of the prophecies of God, the promise of God, the hand of God, God fulfilling in his word what he said he was going to do. Then there began to be Even that time, 120,000 Jews came back. There was a mass migration from 1948 to 1952. In 1967, there was the Six-Day War. Uh, where that, that the war that happened in the Golan Heights, the Gaza Strip that we hear about in the news now, all these things, Israel gained control of all of that. In 1967... But in 1978, they agreed to withdraw from that. 1984, there was something called Operation Moles. 7,800 black Jews were rescued from Ethiopia. In 1991, it was a 36-hour airlift. It was codenamed Operation Solomon. Israel rescued 14,300 black Jews from Ethiopia. And then we come to the Gulf War, which many of us remember this time of history. Why why is this all important? Because you got to know the time we're living in. You got to know that what's going on in the news, we may hear that side of it. Listen, there's a whole other side of the story. There's a prophecy of God, Daniel, or listen, Jesus in Luke 21, 24 said about this, they shall fall by the edge of the sword and be led away captive unto all nations. And Jerusalem will be trampled by the Gentiles, listen, until the times of the Gentiles are fulfilled. I'm going to try to bring this to a close here in just a moment because then we've got to be back before long, but Daniel prophesied about 69 weeks that were determined upon Israel. You can find this in Daniel chapter 9. Let me read it to you. You need to hear this. Begins with verse 23. At the beginning, this was when Daniel was praying. Gabriel was sent from God with the answer to Daniel. Daniel was withstood by the prince of Persia, which was a demonic force, not the natural prince of Persia. And Michael had to come and take that battle over so Gabriel could be released and brought the answer to Daniel. And he said, at the beginning of your supplication, the command went out, and I've come to tell you, for you are greatly beloved. Therefore, consider the matter and understand the vision Seventy weeks are determined for your people and for your holy city. Listen to this. To finish the transgression, to make an end of sins, and to make reconciliation 
for iniquity to bring in everlasting righteousness, to seal up the vision and the prophecy, and to anoint the most holy. Know therefore and understand that from going forth of the command to restore and build Jerusalem, the Messiah of the Prince there will be, shall be seven weeks, and each week is seven years. And then 60 and two weeks. So you look at that, there have been 69 weeks of Daniel's 70 weeks that have been fulfilled. And you can go on and read that scripture. Why, again, is that scripture important? It is important because we are in the period between week 69 and week 70. That's exactly where we're at right now. Some would call it the church age that we're in right now. The time of the Gentiles, even, that Jesus would speak of. This is that day. Are you understanding prophecy? I hope you're getting the picture. That's where we're at. And I believe we're getting close to the end of that week or this period not the week but this time period the church age then he says there's one more week determined upon Israel seven years it's a time that's called the tribulation period it's a time that there will be wars battle of Gog and Magog when Israel will fill out they're at peace so isn't it amazing that right now the battle that is going on, Lebanon is fighting from the top. Uh, Palestinians are fighting from here. They, during the Gulf War, there were missiles shot from Iraq and other places. And you got all this instability right now. And there's this thing called Antichrist. Now, don't, the, you'll get the scripture in my notes. It's already here, the spirit of Antichrist. Because it denies Jesus Christ has come in the flesh. Not just Jesus, not a man, but Jesus Christ. And if Jesus, the anointed one of God, did not come in the flesh, then none of this matters. And none of these prophecies are fulfilled. But we know, thank God, that he did. I've experienced him this morning. How about you? Something's got to happen at some point. And I'm not a time setter and never have tried to be, never will try to be. Because I, I still believe no man knows the day and the hour. I just know when God says, Jesus, go get him, Jesus is coming to get us. I don't know about you, I believe Jesus is <laughs> cut up there like that. Come on, Daddy, come on, tell me. I'm ready to go get my people, right? I'm ready to go get my bride. But he can't come until God says, go get him. And that 70th week will be called the tribulation period. And to Christ will sign that peace treaty with Jerusalem. There'll be the first three and a half years of the tribulation will not be easy times, but it will not be good times from people living here, but the last three and a half years because Antichrist will reveal the truth of who he is and turn against the nation of Israel who will defile the temple. And then that's the period of the mark of the beast during that time, all these things you hear about. And I'm going to leave it at that because I want to look at eternity next Sunday morning. Because Lord willing, I'm getting up early and driving home from Shabbat. On Sunday morning next week. I asked the Lord this week because I always like to have something in a message that not only speaks of the fact of prophecy, but would speak to us this morning also as individuals. And this is what I sense from the Lord that the same God that has restored 
Israel and will finish restoring Israel and will Jesus will sit upon the throne of David. The same God that has not failed in one thing about restoring the land of Israel. Understand this to me, whatever you feel like you've lost this morning. Whatever you're feeling in a place that, for whatever reason, sin, life situations, but there's a place in your life that you need restoration. There is something you need. Understand, the same God that is the God of restoration of Israel, the same God that said the things that the pommel worm, the canker worm, the cat, all those worms, I can't remember all of them right off, as I ate off the fruit tree, God said, I'm going to give it back. And God said, I'm going to restore it, right? Everything they've eaten, everything they've taken away from you, I'm going to restore it. The Bible says also that you know whatever God's going to restore to you sevenfold, right? God's going to give back to you everything that, that you've lost. And I believe this morning that there are some folks here as they come back around this morning with worship that you need a place of restoration in your life. Maybe it may be that you feel like you've walked away from God and, and you're hopeless this morning, but I'm saying this is the day of restoration. Maybe you're here with a marriage that is, is just falling apart or has, has fallen apart. I'm telling you, God is a God of restoration. Maybe you feel like you've lost everything you've ever had in your life. I'm telling you that God is a God of restoration. And I believe God will restore from you. I, I sense that there is a lie that, that some of you are being told that because of what you've done and because you once had a relationship with God, but now you're not walking in the fullness of that relationship that you'll never be able to get back to that relationship because of what happened. God is going to shut the mouth of the enemy this morning and shut the mouth of the liar. And I believe that God wants you to know that he's a God of restoration to you. Amen. And he will restore. So I'm going to ask the ministers here and I'm going to ask the prayer team to, uh, to come on up this morning and I want you to stand with me. If you're here and you're ready for something to be restored in your life, come. Let's pray over you. Let's believe this together. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah, Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Holy Spirit.
catch just a minute. I really feel like there's some folks here that, well, I don't know if I've ever had this before. But you give up on love. You've given up on being loved. Because you feel like you can't be loved. And you just given up on love. God wants to heal that in you this morning. Oh, Jesus, right now. There's even some marriages in this house that have given up on love. walked through some hard times and you almost feel it's not even worth to love that person anymore but can I tell you this morning that the marriage vow is sacred before God I know this day we, we kind of act like anything goes. But listen, the Word of God's pretty plain. About walking away from your marriage and marrying somebody else. The world may not have any standards, but Christians are standards. And I say that because I feel like if you're in a place that you feel like I'm just going to give up on this. And it's not that you've been cheated on. It's not that you are being abused. You just, tough times, you just don't care anymore. It is hell saying give up on your marriage. Jesus said, I'll restore that love. I'll restore that love. And there's some of you that have walked through divorce already. And you're wearing this thing over your head that's like a, like I got this banner on me says, well, I've been divorced. Listen, can I tell you there is only one sin that is unforgivable and that's blasphemy against the Holy Spirit. The blood of Jesus wants to remove your signs and your tags this morning. Those things that hang over you that makes you think you're unworthy and unlovable and God can't even love you and and you're, you're not worthy of a promise of God being fulfilled in you. Those are lies of hell. Lord with an unquenchable love this morning and the capacity of God that God breathes and God flows and God sheds his love abroad in the heart of the Christian that that enables the Christian to love with a capacity that the world does not have because that's the agape love of God that's the love that he loves you with. Holy Spirit, I give that to you this morning. We're going to sing through another verse or chorus. Don't walk away giving up. Run to the restorer this morning. That'll put a robe back on your back. Put shoes on your feet. Put a ring on your finger and he'll party with you. (laughs) 
Hey, he'll kill the fatty calf and he'll party with you. Even if the elder brother gets jealous, that God's still going to party with you because he loves you. Let's sing one more time, guys. Holy Spirit, man. Every day says, Lord, that even right now that in every area there has been loss that there will be restoration. Lord, I believe there will be love to flow that is a love, that is a God-made love of God, that is an unconditional love of God, that there'd never be a reason to say I give up, there'd never be a reason to say I quit because of the love of God that is there. Lord, I believe there is healing right now that is taking place. Healing in marriage is God. Let it be done this morning. Let restoration, God of restoration, let the first love again flow marriages are here Lord I honor you and I bless you for that now in Jesus name would you say amen as Paul comes around Hey, um, I just want to say real quick, I just felt, Zachary, could you just, for a minute, um, I don't want us to leave yet. Uh, I, I kept hearing Pastor two or three times talk about it, and I was very overwhelmed, overwhelmed while we were down here front. And here's what I, I want you, and I'm not going to do an altar call again, but here's what I felt. There are some believers I feel... so overwhelmed right now that there's some believers in here. Pastor said it many times even for all of us that you felt like you were so far away. And I was reminded of when Adam and Eve were created. They were created to have communion and fellowship with Jesus. And then they messed up in that moment. And here's what God did in that moment. He came down, the Bible says, and he was walking and they heard him. And they hid. There's some believers that are hiding because you think that communion, that relationship with God has been broken. But here's the great thing about us in this generation is when Jesus came, he tore the veil. 
When Jesus came, he said, you can go boldly to the throne room and you don't have to walk in those moments anymore where you feel like you're not worth all that he has for you. I just really feel like there's some believers in the house you feel like you can't be vulnerable. You can't be broken in a place that is good. You ever been broken in a place that is good? What did Jesus do? He broke it and he blessed it. There's some restoration that's happening in the house. There's some restoring. Even in my own life, look, as a pastor in this church, there's some moments where I say, God, I just need you. That's all I need. You are more than enough for me. So if you feel like, hey, I've gone too far, I've been too far, I'm too dirty, I'm too gross, I'm too nasty, I'm too this. No, you ain't. There is nothing that you can ever do to separate you from the love of Christ. Okay, I'm good now. Just had to get that off my chest. So, uh, amen. Um, I don't even know where I was going. Hallelujah. Amen. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Here we go. All right. Okay. Holy Spirit. Back to the announcements. God is good, ain't he? Yeah, all the time. Hey, just uh, remember today at 5 o'clock. Listen, this church is full. Look around. See who all's in here. If they're not here tonight, you're going to be in trouble. We're watching. No, I'm just kidding. So you have to be here at night uh, at 5 o'clock just to hear fellowship, grow together, love one another. If you love your church, you need to, seriously, you need to be here. The last thing is, is uh, somebody, uh, well, two people in our church has had an anniversary over the past couple of weeks. How many? 40, wow. Hallelujah. 48 years. Pastor Ricky and Cheryl have been together. I have not even been alive for 48 years. And they were married before I was born. Okay, that's enough. I will quit rubbing that in. Yeah, so, um, no, happy anniversary to you guys. We always want to bless them. Um, you know, we try to do that with birthdays and, and anniversary and Christmas because how many of you know as a pastor, you don't get... You don't get overtime. You don't get those extra gifts. So we want to bless them this morning. As you leave, there'll be uh, an usher at the door. Uh, you could drop that gift in there just to tell them we love them. We appreciate them for not only being married for 48 years, but being a godly example of what a marriage should be. Amen. So uh, we love you guys. Uh, and I'm going to just pray over you and pray over them, okay? And then we'll close out and we'll see you back at 5 o'clock. All right. Lord, we just thank you. For the word that was spoken this morning, we thank you, Lord, that you are a restorer. And Lord, that uh, you are restoring even our relationships with you. God, as the pastor was even talking about restoring Israel. God, we thank you that you are a personal God that loves us. And Lord, that you have relationship with each of us. Uh, Lord, I just pray over Pastor Ricky and Cheryl as they continue uh, in this journey of marriage, Lord, that you would continue to bless them, Lord, that you would wrap your arms around them, that you would give them good health, uh, Lord, that you would give them strength, you would give them peace, you would give them rest. Lord, we just bless their marriage in Jesus' name, amen. We love you, church. We'll see you tonight at 5.